uh, we will have an AMC 1012 coming up this week. Uh, I wanted to share uh, the solution to this problem. Okay, so this question is a geometry problem where uh, unit configuration. Uh, I'm just going to start with the circumcircle, I guess. This is traditional. Uh, I think it's a good practice to draw the circumcircle of a triangle to begin with. So we are told that this angle is a 60 degree angle and angle B is um, less than 90. We, we don't know angle C. We know that BC is 1, measures 1 unit, but AC is greater than AB suggests that uh, angle B is greater than angle C. You can either use law of sine, for instance, to establish that this is the case. All right, so uh, the three points, H, I, and O, the orthocenter, in center, and the circumcenter. Let me try to eyeball them. Well, actually, no, let, let me not eyeball them. Uh, I will regret it probably. Let's just do a decent work. So drop a perpendicular here. Drop another one here. Okay, does this look perpendicular? Probably not. All right, so this is perpendicular. So we have our orthocenter. The circumcenter of the circle, this one I'm going to eyeball it. But one way to find it, the, its exact location is it's on the perpendicular bisector over here, right? And this is also a perpendicular bisector over here. So these are the midpoints, obviously, right? And so this is O, this is H. Finally, we need the in-center. For the in-center, I need to draw two angle bisectors. So maybe I can draw this one. Whoops, that's definitely an angle, angle bisector because this is the midpoint of arc BC. And because this one is also a midpoint, I can just go ahead and draw this angle bisector as well. So this must be I. All right, so let me actually do, use a different color. So I is here. This one is O. Um, let me put it like this. So this is I, this is O. And this is H. All right. Uh, the question is maximize the area of BCOIH. All right. So this is a pentagon. Let me just go ahead and draw the missing sides of this pentagon. So this side is missing. This side is missing. And finally, this one is missing. I'll just start by drawing two additional line segments. I'm just going to connect BO and CI as well. CI is obviously an angle bisector. Right. So if you are preparing for a JMO practice, uh, you probably know that there's a certain special property related to these type of triangles. So if this is a 60 degree angle, uh, we can start by measuring three different angles. Angle BOC. Try to tell me what is the measurement of angle BOC. Well, it's like I can I'm hearing that you guys are saying angle BAC subtends minor arc BC. Angle BOC is a central angle which subtends the same arc. One of them is on the circle. The other one is a central. So therefore, BOC must be 120 degrees. Now, the second angle I'm considering is angle BIC. Angle BIC, this is a very well-known uh, result. It's just 90 degrees plus angle A over 2. Because angle A in our case is a 60 degree angle, uh, so that would be 120 degrees as well. Now that's a strange thing. So that tells us that uh, quadrilateral BIOC is cyclic. Now our pentagon has another point on it, H. And then later on I'll think about maximizing the area of this pentagon, right? But hey, so far, uh, guess what? Uh, we looked at angle BOC, BIC. Well, why not? We can as well check BHC as well. I'm missing a segment there, so let me just go ahead and add that segment. That segment, BH, is important, as you guys can imagine, simply because if I extend it, that will be another altitude, right? Uh, well, the, the last uh, angle I want to chase is uh, BHC. By the way, there's a lot of Olympiad problems with this configuration, BAC being 60 degrees. There's this really useful trick that... The point H, if you reflect across BC, it will fall directly onto the circumcircle of triangle BAC. So uh, if you call this point H prime, H prime is the reflection of H across BC. Well, if that's the case, then, uh, well, obviously I'm leaving it to pr the proof to you guys. If that's the case, then obviously triangle BHC and BH prime C would be congruent triangles. And as a result, angle BHC would be the same as angle BH prime C. But BH prime C, when you think about it, it's part of the quadrilateral, the cyclic quadrilateral A, B, H prime C. That's a cyclic quadrilateral because angle A is 60 degrees. BH prime C must be 120 degrees. 
holy. So, <laughs> so not only we have B, I, O, C, which is a cyclic quad, but the point H is also on that circle. Does that make sense? So now what we have is we have this large circle, which goes through those uh, five points. So that's the first order of business. Oops, oh, sorry for that. All right, so I know one thing for sure, that BCOI uh, pentagon, that uh, for which we are trying to maximize the area, it's no ordinary pentagon, it's a cyclic pentagon. All right, so uh, that was the first order of business, noticing that this uh, pentagon is cyclic. The second order of business is doing a little bit of angle chasing uh, and that's one thing that I can highly recommend, uh, especially for those of you who are preparing for Olympiad problem solving. Um, make sure you understand the configuration involving the orthocenter, which is basically the ortic triangle configuration. The configuration involving the circumcenter and incenter as well. So the angle chase is pretty standard, uh, to be honest. So, but you have to do it to improve those skills, right? Anyhow, so simple angle chase will reveal that. Uh, Okay, for instance, if you check um, which angle, uh, let's check these two angles. So this angle, uh, when you think it carefully, you will uh, you will notice that this angle is part of the right triangle B, C, uh, well, I have no choice. Let me put a letter here. Let's say call it D. So it's part of this right triangle B, D, C. And because this is B, so this one must be 90 minus B. Um, well, uh, how about um, this angle? If you check this angle over here, you notice that uh, to begin with, if you focus your attention on triangle AOC, AOC, angle AOC is a central angle, which subtends arc AC. That arc is also subtended by uh, angle ABC, but because angle ABC is on the circle and angle AOC is a central angle, AOC measures two. Uh, angle B, but AOC is also an isosceles triangle, so necessarily this angle must be B. If that angle is B, that means this angle over here is 90 minus B. Good. If those two angles are equal, but the fact of the matter is this angle was also equal to that angle because uh, CI bisects angle ACB. As a result, the two black angles are equal. The green portions, if you take out the green portions, the little portions in the middle are also equal. So those two angles are equal. So, so far we know that angle chase, further angle chase, <laughs> uh, further angle chase reveals that angle OCI, angle OCI is equal to angle HCI, right? So I think that's clear. But what it means is because we have this uh, blue circle, the circumcircle of this pentagon, and because these angles are equal, uh, what it means is they subtend those arcs HI and IO, those chords HI, which is one of the sides of our pentagon, and the other side IO, they have to measure the same length. Does that make sense? Angles are the same. Angles intercept those arcs. Arcs are equal. And if arcs are equal, chords uh, must be equal as well. Does that make sense? So therefore, this implies that HI is equal to IO. That's it. So that's the farthest angle chase will take you. Now, notice that we're trying to maximize the area of our pentagon. Our pentagon, we can split the area into two parts. This part, uh, quadrilateral BOIH, and then, um, well, I guess I'm just going to ruin the picture. All right, so this one. Do you guys agree? The sum of those two pieces will give you the area, well, the desired area, basically. Right, so this area. So one thing which kind of is obvious is that because this angle is 120 degrees and side length BC is a 1, obviously because BOC is an isosceles triangle, this is a 60, that's a 60, Im implying this is a 30 degrees. We have two uh, 30, 60, 90 uh, triangles here, right? So this is an altitude, obviously, an altitude of BOC, if you want. A BOC, like I said, is an uh, isosceles triangle. Do you guys agree that this will be one half? So as a result, you can easily measure the altitude of this green triangle, which will be fixed. Does that make sense? So the area of the green triangle is a fixed thing. So if you want to maximize the area of this pentagon, 
uh, we have to maximize the area of the quadrilateral BOIH, where OI is equal to IH. Okay, so let me just go ahead and just do a quick brainstorming. So we have this chord. Um, so on the one end, we have B. On the other end, we have O. Oops, uh, O, I think, yes, O. And uh, such that OI and IH are equal, right? So let me just do it over here. Uh, you know what? I'm going to make it look like... Well, okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we have O. There you go. There you go. So these two chords are equal. Those two are equal. And this one is something else. The, so something else. Uh, this one is an I. This one is an H. All I did was to augment the, the yellow region, right? So this is the yellow area. Our goal is to maximize this area by just keep changing h and i the points the location of the points h and i what does that mean changing them well changing them means because we have this degree of freedom this angle is 60 degrees but b and c can change right so you can easily construct something on geogebra for instance to convince yourself that by just dragging a to the left or to the right and so on along this circle for instance you can move it the angle will be preserved but um yeah, so H and I will move on that arc of this circle for which you have the segment BO. All right, so how do we maximize the area? Uh, your gut feeling tells you that probably I and H should be such that they will trisect arc BO, right? Which is correct. That's the one that will maximize area. Like many things in math, somehow we realize math is beautiful. And a lot of results seem to just follow by pure symmetry. And one thing I can quickly do is the following. If you focus your attention, if I split this yellow area into two parts, IHB and OBI, so we have two parts, right? We are, we are trying to maximize the area of the sum of those two little triangles. The midpoint of arc BI, if that midpoint is whatever, K, let's call it, clearly the area of BKI will be greater than any other point that you pick along that arc bi do you guys see that if k is the midpoint of arc bi why because if it's the midpoint indeed if i were to draw a parallel shift of bi it will be tangent at the point k so as a result if i keep shifting that further and further ultimately and so these two are perpendicular this one so the altitude there will be greater than the altitude from uh, from h to bi does that make sense? All you do is keep shifting BI until it hits the arc only at one point by symmetry. It has to be that midpoint of arc BI. So therefore, bringing H closer to the midpoint of BI is what we need, right? Um, and you can uh, apply a similar argument. Um, well, the, on the other side, we already know this is a midpoint, right? So now, okay, HI is equal to IO, but by my analysis, we also realize that it must be such that uh, BH must be equal to HI as well. We realize that the one that optimizes it should be such that H should be shifted all the way to K. Does that make sense? So therefore, I and H must be such that they will trisect BO. Right, but then that's interesting. So we have three angles one, two, three angles which will measure the same right now. Right, optimization implies that um, BH must also be equal to HI, BH must also be equal to HI, which is already equal to IO as well. Right, so we have this trisection. Um, well, uh, having said that, now all we need is, hey, look at that. We already know angle B, C, uh, uh, sorry, what, what is that point? Oh, uh, B, C, O, yeah. B, C, O, we already know measures 30 degrees. So each of these little pieces measures 10. Earlier in the angle chase, we established that this angle was exactly the same as this piece. So this one must also be 10. And as a result, angle C is 40, which means the whole angle B is 80 because they add up to 180 degrees. This one is 60. So that's it. So angle B is 80 and that solves uh, this problem. Well, hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, this is one of the questions if you are already practicing for Olympiad purposes so that you, you, you have more chance of solving this problem. Um, yeah, because uh, the concepts are a little bit more advanced. So you have to have a good understanding of the ortho center, in center and the circum center, obviously. All right, so hope you guys enjoyed it and looking forward to see you guys in, a, in the next video, I guess.
Thank you.